Hi, this is Dave Swicker. I'm the CMO for GenRocket, and I'd like to welcome everybody to today's edition of Test Data Topics. This is a weekly conversation with Garth Rose, GenRocket CEO, and Heisel Taylor, GenRocket CTO. And in each session, we're going to take up a topic of interest to describe GenRocket capabilities. Today, we're going to talk about the concept of data masking. And I'd like to start the conversation by going to Garth and asking him to explain why this is an important concept for us. Sure, thanks Dave. Uh, hi everybody. So of course, data masking, uh, you're in the marketplace talking to customers and they're talking about TDM or test data management and data masking, sort of a common theme there. Why is that uh, important? Well, because of course, you have offshore teams who need to be able to provide testing services for your clients, but the data has to be secure. So that's a mandate, which is to have secure data. And of course, if you're working in the EU, there's the GDPR regulation. If you're here in the United States, whether it's a HIPAA regulation or other regulations around data security, that's a mandate as well. So there's clearly market drive for data masking solutions. And we want you to know that GenRocket has a fantastic solution that we call synthetic data replacement. And Heisel, um, could you share with the audience uh, how GenRocket goes about data masking? Sure. So I'll just speak about three points, security, behavior, and control. So the first one is security. When you're, when you're doing data masking the old-fashioned way, you're actually going to a particular value, you're grabbing that value, you're trying to obfuscate it or mask it or something, and then make sure that that gets into your destination uh, system. Now, you have no guarantee that that's going to be 100% correct, uh, and that's the insecure part about it. In GenRocket, with synthetic data replacement, we actually never touch that value. We actually simply use a generator to replace that value, which makes it absolutely 100% secure. Second piece there is behavior. The behavior is what you're looking at when you're saying, I have a particular uh, database or table or attribute that has a particular type of behavior. So for instance, I am a social security number. That's my behavior. I produce social security numbers or I produce birth dates or I produce uh, credit card numbers, okay? well. In a production environment, you don't, just because the behavior of it says I'm a social security number, migrating that or obfuscating that doesn't guarantee you that it is actually a social security number or it's actually a birth date or a driver's license or if it's positive or negative because you don't know what the state of that actual value is, which goes to the third piece, control. In GenRocket, you actually get to control what the data is that you're migrating over, even if you wanted to emulate kind of what your production environment looks like. But when you're testing, you absolutely, absolutely need control over the data. So you might want to say 60% of the time I want the data to look like this, or 30% of the time I want it to look like this. Or if my customer is a gold customer, I want the social security number to start with 333. So these are the th three huge things you get with GenRocket's synthetic data replacement, secure, security, behavior, and control. Thanks, Isel. Um, if I were to summarize what I heard from both of you gentlemen, synthetic data replacement is something that GenRocket can do whenever the question about data masking is raised. We have an answer for that. It's an important answer because it addresses all of the privacy laws that are important, and it allows a variety of testing scenarios to happen securely, for example, offshore testing. And from a technical point of view, we actually have a solution that's better than just traditional masking, which is obfuscation of, of sensitive data. We have a solution that adds to that the ability to control the quality of the data and to ensure that the behavior of the data is exactly what we want to have in our test plan. Perfect, sounds good, David. Awesome. Okay, thanks guys for this week's session. We'll look forward to another topic in next week's Test Data Topics.